and it is now 8.03 a.m. and I hope that the latecomers have arrived in time to see all of this because we're going to start by solving exponential equations, first the very basic ones and then the, the more difficult ones, although you're going to notice that solving exponential functions is much easier than solving logarithmic functions because you have to know all those rules of logarithms to solve a logarithmic equation. Then we'll take a break, then we'll do the word problems, which will take up the rest of the day, our time together. Um, okay, all right, so let's do this. Problem number one in your homework is a good way to start. Three to the five X minus seven equals nine. There are two ways to do this. There's an easier way, and then there's the basic method for solving exponential equations. We're gonna do it both ways, because sometimes you get lucky, like here. For instance, you know, everybody knows that nine is three to the second power. I mean, that is definitely not rocket science. So the easiest way to do this is to say C, uh, three to the five X minus seven equals three to the second power. I mean, duh. And if the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same, right? So 5x minus 7 equals 2. All right, now, all we have to do is solve this equation. Plus 7 plus 7. So 5x equals 9, and x is going to equal, if we divide both sides by 5, x equals 9 fifths. That is the easy way to do it, in my opinion, easy way. You understand rarely are you lucky enough to have a relationship like that going on. Uh, but anyway, now let's use the basic method for solving exponential equations. And this is the main method we're going to use for solving all exponential equations. Here we go. We are going to take the log of both sides. Why? Well, one, the logarithmic uh, function is the inverse of the exponential function. Two, the arithmetic of logarithms says we can take this exponent and bring it down. I can't solve for x as long as it's up there. Even over here, I had to end up bringing it down. So, given the arithmetic of logarithms, we now will have 5x minus 7 times the log of three. And what is the base? In case you've slept since last week, when you don't see a base down here, the base is 10. It doesn't really play into anything here, but I thought I'd mention it. There now. Okay. 
I am going to. <laughs> OK, because you need to get ready for what we're going to do a little bit later in solving exponential and logarithmic equations. The log three is just a number. If you put it in your calculator, you'll get a number. It's an ugly decimal, but it's still just a number. So I'm going to apply log three to both of these terms. That is, I'm going to distribute. So I'll have five X times log three minus seven log three equals log nine bleh, equals log nine. OK, I look for all my terms that have X because remember in all this log stuff going on, it's X I'm trying to find. OK, so this is just a number. Seven times log three is just a number. I'm going to add that over to the other side so that I can isolate my X term. Plus seven log three. See, this is much harder than that, right? You want to do this when you can. Most of the time you can't. Equals, no, I don't put equals there, but I do put a plus sign there. I'm going to add over here. I'm going to add over here. Okay. Now, these zero out, leaving me with, all right, five is just a number, log three is just a number. It's customary to put numbers in front of the X, so that's what I'm going to do. Five log three. Times X equals log nine. plus log three, uh, seven log three. Now I'm going to divide both sides by five times log three. Now, if we were just finding the exact answer, this would kind of sort of be the exact answer. However, remember, we're, we're going to be putting this in the calculator, so we have to try to make this easy on the calculator. And this is a great way to review all the arithmetic of logarithms. So let me make sure that I haven't done anything wrong so far, and no, I have not. Okay, let's look at the numerator here. Log of nine plus seven times log three. Now, all of us want to make fewer mistakes on the calculator. So it's important that we use the, uh, the properties of logarithms, the arithmetic of logarithms that we talked about last week. And this is a good way to review. The power rule tells me that I can take this seven and put it up in the exponent position. OK, I'm going to do that. Log 9. Now notice this plus, wait a minute, don't notice it yet. 3 to the 7th. 
Notice that the power rule says we can bring down the exponent when it's needed, and then we can put a, a, a number in front of the log up as an exponent. So this is a very good rule. Now, I have the log of nine plus the log of three to the seventh power. So I'm going to use the product rule to change this to this log I'm going to move it down so it's very visible. Log of 9 times 3 to the 7th. That's what the product rule lets me do. Well, why is that any good? Well, give me time, I'll tell you. Let's see if we can get a decent number that doesn't go out to, to scientific notation. Nine times three carat seven. Well, it's a number, 19683. I don't like it because I hate big numbers, but let us, let us go with it. Try not to panic. That's what this is up here. This is the log, the numerator is the log of one, nine, six, eight, three, divided by, now let's look at the denominator, five times log three. If I use the power rule again, Um, this five will go up here and become a power. Log of three to the fifth. Well, let's see what three to the fifth is. Th three carat five is 243. So this is the log of two 43. Now let's go back here. If you put that in your calculator and then divide by that, I promise you won't get the right answer. I promise, promise, promise. You have to simplify it for the calculator who the calculator is not as smart as it pretends to be. It depends on our keystrokes, and if we make even a little bitty wrong keystroke, even though we didn't mean to, even though it doesn't seem wrong, we're not going to get the right answer. Now we're more likely to get the right answer, even though it was more trouble. So X is going to equal, and what I'm going to put in my calculator is this. That's right, down here I'll put log 243. Okay, come over here. Double check, make sure I typed all that right. 19683243. Okay, got it. Here we go. Log, click the log button. 19683. Close parentheses, or I promise you won't get the right number. Divide log 243. Enter 1.8. Uh, let's math frack it because remember we got a fraction over here. Um, 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 math frack is down here. Math frack. Enter. Ah, <gasps> nine fifths.
Doctor. Well, oh, Professor. What a long, horrible way to get nine fifths. This was so much easier when you know that you can rewrite this number over here with the same base. Do it. It'll be so much faster. But the value of this is that you had a chance to review the, the power rule and the product rule. You have to have these memorized. Put them on cards. Put them on something that looks like cards and go over them all day long. Professor? Clear. And we move on to number two that's just like number one. What a ripoff. Oh, it's not. It just looks like it is. But it's the same kind of problem. Okay. Let's go to this. This could mess you up. Number three. Just because you know too much. You know that two goes into six. So six is two times three. When you're looking with log working with logarithms, if you don't know that six is two to a power, and it's not, I mean, not to an easy one that we know, um, um, you're gonna get the wrong answer, yeah. So the best thing to do, if you cannot write that six the way you wrote the nine right here is three to the two, then what you're gonna do is what we just did, take the log of both sides. That's the basic way to solve an exponential equation that won't let you solve it in this easy way. OK, now I'm going to use the power rule to bring that X. Down in front. Let me write it down. Power rule. Which will make that X times the log. Of two. Equals the log. Of six. The log of a number is just a number, albeit an ugly number. But it's a number. So X times the number, if I'm going to solve for X, I'm going to divide both sides by the number multiplying X. Let's do it. So X times the log of two, divided by the log of two, equals the log of six divided by the log of two. Now this should be uh, fairly easy to do. Let me cancel these. So I will have X equals, I don't know, let's see. This says it's gonna be 2.5850, round to four decimal places. We'll see. Log of six, log six, close parentheses, divided by log two, close parentheses. Yep, let's put this over there because I hope you'll be studying the notes. Now you'll have the complete notes and you'll have the notes from our class. Okay. 
four decimal places. Here's the whole number. And then one, two, three, four decimal places. I look at the fifth decimal place, and that six will definitely cause the nine to round up to a 10, but I'm not going to stick a 10 in there. So here's what my thinking has to do. X equals 2.58496. Instead of thinking of nine being rounded up to a 10, I have to kind of increase my view and look at 49. Six will cause 49 to round up to 50. So X equals 2.5850, only it doesn't equal. Let's get rid of that equal sign. X equals the log of six over the log of two. Please observe, observe that this is the exact answer. Anything we have to round, X does not actually equal. Answers from calculators, if you have to round, are approximate. There you go. The double squiggle means approximate. So somewhere, eventually you're going to have X squiggle. Here's a problem just like it. You would do it exactly the same way. I mean, with exactly the same steps. Now when we get to number five, things get a little more involved. So, so that I'll have a lot of room, I'm gonna to move to another page. 10 to the X power equals five to the X plus three power. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Okay, now I'm going to use the power rule. Almost always, that's what you do after you take the log of both sides. Not always, don't ever say always. Well, just don't ever, that's a kind of a global word too. X times the log of 10 equals X plus three times the log of five. Okay. Now note, note. Log 10, log of 10, excuse me, is log base 10 of 10. There's another arithmetic rule you learned last week. And that is when these two numbers are the same, your answer is one, just one. So log 10 is one.
Meanwhile, over here, log five is just a number, an ugly number, but a number. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to distribute it. Just distribution is just a form of multiplication it, into the parentheses, thereby multiplying both of these terms by log five. So I'm going to put the log five in front of the X. I don't guess I should. A lot of the time your book makes it after, so we'll do that. Log X times log five plus three times log five. So I'm going to have X, let me move this over a little bit, equals X times log five, plus three times log five. Okay, now, there's a rule that goes way back to when you started learning how to solve little baby equations. This is not a little baby equation, but back when you solve things like x equals 3x plus 5. I just made that up. This is just an example. What did you have to do? You had to get your x terms together on the same side. So you'd have x minus 3, x equals 5. Um, negative 2x equals 5. x equals 5 over negative 2, which is negative 5 over 2. This is just an example. We're going to do the same thing. That's why I did this. This is an X term. Here, X is multiplied by this number. I need to get my X terms together. So I'm going to subtract X log five from both sides of the equation. Let me um, move that so that it's not misunderstood. There. All right, so what that gives me is X minus X log five equals three log five. Okay, come over here. I'm going to have to put my one back. I mean, X is one X, right? Because I need to factor out a GCF. Ooh, haven't done that for a while. There's an X in this term and an X in this term. So I'm going to factor out, I'm gonna move down. Just to make sure it's visible. X times one minus log five equals three log five. <gasps> what do I do now? Well, just stop and think. Remember, you're gonna be talking to your calculator, so there's no reason to make life difficult. The easiest thing to get in the habit to do as you go into home base for, for what? For, for a run. Is to remember that one minus log five is just a number. It's not a number I much like, but it's a number. One minus 
log five. One minus log five. And to make life easier on your calculator, you really should bring your three up. Easier on you. Bring your three up there so that you have log five, five to the third power. I'm kind of thinking you really don't need to do that. Not in this problem, but usually you do need to do it. Over one minus log five. Now, in this in this problem, you see it's always harder on the calculator to get all the keystrokes right. But you're going to have to watch carefully what I do. OK, log. And you have to plan out in advance what you do. Your calculator is going to put parentheses around that and parentheses around that. But you have to group one minus log five. OK, so you're going to have to put your own parentheses here and make sure you close them. Which you see, I try to avoid this at all cost. but we're not going to be able to avoid it this time. Paren, paren is what you're going to end up typing. So I'm going to walk you through this. Log of five carat three, or we could go ahead and write out what five carat three is. Five carat three, five to the third power is 125. Let's do that. Again, fewer keystrokes mean you're more likely to get the right answer. OK. So, log one, two, five close parentheses, divided by paren, one minus log, see the log puts in its own paren, it doesn't give you a choice, five, close this parenthesis, but now you have to not forget to close that parenthesis. So now this is what I have. Log 125 divided by parenthesis one minus log five. And you have to close both of those parentheses. You have to close this parenthesis, well, you have to close that parenthesis right there, and you have to close that parenthesis. Make them match a little bit right there. Once we have this, let's hold our breath and hit enter. Oh, thank God. Oh, and there's your squiggle, too. Look at the squiggle. So this is X equals, and this is X equals. There are times when you can't get away from all the hard stuff, and having to have double parentheses, I consider to be hard stuff, which is why I went to all these steps up here 
in order to avoid having parentheses on the bottom. It's a good habit to get into. But there we go, I am definitely copying that answer. Life would be so much easier. Back in the old days, we didn't have calculators. We just left the answer like that. Actually, you know what we had instead of calculators to translate that into this? We had thick, thick, thick books full of every imaginable number. Blah. Definitely better with a calculator. You just have to be careful. Okay. Now, yeah, round to four decimal places. If you're wondering why I don't, you know, get answers along the way, you're more likely to get a wrong answer. This says do not round until the final answer. That's true. Because you'll get the wrong answer because every time, every time, you use a rounded number, you get more error. Until finally, you put your answer in and my math lab says it's wrong because you've rounded too much and you don't have exactly the same answer. Okay, th this part over here was log 125. But this is what I want right now. One, two, three, Four and eight will definitely cause the seven to go up to an eight. So your answer is going to be X equals 6.9658. Woof, 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 woof. Now this one is going to be about the same thing, but you're not going to end up with a one, which might make life easier. Let's do this. This is number six in your homework. Six to the x equals 2 to the power x plus 2. Okay, now log 6 to the x equals log 2 to the x plus 2. Oh, Barbara. Yes. Now we're going to use the power rule to bring those exponents down in front. X log six equals X plus two. There are two terms there, but they're one thing, the exponent. So put parentheses around it. Log, and then notice you keep the base. That's the base. Well, it's not the base, but it's the base of that exponent. You keep the two. All right, and, and so we use the power rule to go from here to here. Now we're going to use distribution over here log six, uh, uh, x times log six equals 
x times log 2 plus 2 times log 2. Now I don't need those. Well, I do need the 2. OK, what I did is I took log 2. And I distributed it to the X and to the 2. Now again, I have to get my X terms together. There's an X in this term and an X in this term. So I'll subtract X log 2 from both sides of the equation, minus X log 2, which will give me X times log 6. <laughs> yes, OK. X times log 6 minus X times log 2. See, once you get used to doing it, it doesn't really take that long. Equals 2 log 2. Now we have a GCF. X times log 6 minus log 2. No. Don't need those. Do need these. Even though your book often does not, book, my math lab, <clears throat> often does not use parentheses around the arguments, the calculator does. So why not just always use parentheses? Here, I'm going to use the power rule and bring that 2 back up. Why? Because I'll get log of 2 to the second power. And well, you know what that is, 2 squared equals 4. So, here I use the power rule. Over here, I'm going to use the quotient rule. X log six over two, if you know what that is. So this is the quotient rule. Q U O T I E N T rule. It's the first time today we've used it, I think. So the log of 6 over 2, x log 6 over 2 equals the log of 4. Now I'm going to take an extra step and say, hmm, that means x log 3. equals log 4. Divide by log 3. On both sides. Now at this point, it just occurred to me that somebody might decide to cancel out the word log and be left with 4 over 3. Don't do that. Log, note, here's a note. Log is just another name 
or let's say another type. of function. It could be f of x, but instead of f of x, it's log x. Instead of f of 3, it's log 3. Log is just a number. I mean, it's not. Log is just a function. It's a very special function, but a function nonetheless. You don't go around canceling out words here. You did that in pre-algebra when you were learning about proportions, but you don't do it here. Okay, glad we settled that. Well, now my answer, my exact answer is going to be the log of four over the log of three. I get my trusty calculator, hopefully trusty. Clear, log four, close paren, divided by log three, close paren. And there I have that. Let's compare it to what they say the answer is. Yeah, alrighty. Again, the reason I want to take pictures of these is for your benefit. So that that you can see. The answer you get on the calculator. So now we're going to do the X squiggle. Because we're going to round to one, two, three, four decimal places. Here's the fifth decimal place, and that five will cause the eight to go up to a nine. So the answer you put in the answer box is going to be 1.2619. And I promise you that this gets easier. But you absolutely have to memorize the laws of logarithms, the laws, the arithmetic of logarithms, also called the properties of logarithms. All right, now we get to my favorite number, E. E is a number that's about 2.7. All right, pi is a number that's about 3.14. E is a number that's about 2.7. And both of them are universal constants. They were always there, they were discovered. They were not invented. Discovered by the ancient Greeks, discovered by the ancient Mesopotamians. Go, 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 history. All right, here we go. E, E, E raised to this power, negative 0 0.48 T equals 0 0.48 zero five. Well, this is an exponential equation. So yes, I'm going to take the log of both sides, but I get a choice. There are different kinds of logs. And E works with, or works best with, the ln, the natural log, which is log base E. They're the same thing, but we write ln. 
So ln of e to the negative 0.48t equals the ln of 0 0.05. And so I use the power rule to bring that guy down in front, negative 0.48t times the ln of E equals the ln of 0 0.05. Now something else, something else to look at, super note, I guess that was a note too, but oh well. When you write the ln of E, what you're really writing is log base E of E. And again, when these two numbers are the same number, the answer is one. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this number is 1. And negative 0.48t times 1 is negative 0.48t equals the ln of 0 0.05. Divide by negative 0.48 divide by negative 0 0.48 and put that in the calculator. Boom, boom, T, squiggle. T is about. The LN of 0 0.05 divided by negative 0 0.48, double check, enter. And my math lab agrees. So, Again, we do our four decimal place thing. One, two, three, four, followed by a zero. Oh boy. Yeah, that zero is not going to do anything. So our answer you put in the answer box is 6.2411. And I keep practicing my European ones. I don't think I'll ever be good at it. 